y'all welcome back to my channel my name is Catherine and this is just being Catherine I am so excited for today's video I am starting a new series just been home where I make over my subscriber spaces virtually I asked you guys over on Instagram to send in one photo of an issue or dilemma that you're having with your space so that I can make it over virtual design is also known as e-design and I do a little bit of that on the side I thought it'd be pretty cool to tackle some of those problems in a video here on my channel and if you guys like this type of video talk to me in the comments and let me know so I will be tackling over four completely different spaces that have common problems that many people have even if this is not your space I hope you take away some of these tips and ideas and implement them in your own and if I'm making over your space in this video please send me a message over on Instagram DM me sharing a photo of your final space I would love to see how it all came together and if my suggestions really helped you so don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to see more home decor videos let's jump right into it the first space is coming from Sade let's see what issues she's having in her space Hello everyone, I'm Sade. Today I'm here to talk about my space because I would really love a makeover for a tiny space in my home. Um, the dilemma I face is just not having a quiet area in my home to study or to do work. We live in a two bedroom apartment and so there's not very much room outside of the two rooms that we do have, but there is a tiny corner inside of my room that I think would work perfectly for a small space renovation. Hoping that Catherine can work her magic in turning this into a work area for me. Aw, thank you so much for sending this video in. I have the perfect solution. Oftentimes when we think of a workspace and bedroom, it's often frowned upon. Because the space is small, I wanna make sure to give it a realistic and easy to change solution. Hear me out. I first invest in a desk, small enough to fit in this space, an affordable one from Ikea, and one that has storage. And it also has a compartment in the back to hide your cords. Then I would add a floating shelf above for more storage, but also display personalized decor, artwork, photos, anything that's meaningful because it still is a bedroom. And you can even replicate that shelf on the other side. So I didn't see a light anywhere. So I would suggest a desk task lamp so that you can work early mornings or late nights and extra seating to help you avoid working from your bed. Oh, and for extra storage, I'm thinking a desk organizer like this one or a wall organizer where you can access things that you are gonna be reaching for more often. I have another desk solution that I think is even more practical. This is an adjustable folding sit and standing desk. That was a mouthful. So at any time Sade wants to turn her bedroom back into its original function, she can just fold it up and roll it into a closet. And I think this is a great solution for many of you guys who may be working from home now and you have a small space. This second option is ideal because you can roll it anywhere you want to. You can stand up, sit down and tuck it away when you're done with this. So it won't take up more space in your room. Next question comes from Khadija. My name is Khadija and hopes that you, Catherine, can help me decorate and spruce up my living room area. The walls are pretty bare, um, it's awkwardly built, and it's not storage compatible. So any tips and tricks that you can offer me while adding some color, fun, and flair would be greatly appreciated. Color, fun, and flair challenge accepted just from looking at this video i can tell that she has a collected vibe a variety of plants a boho rug i absolutely love the large three windows and the color of the couch so you're on the right path i think you just need more ideas on how to make this space come together feel more warm cozy and more of you oftentimes when i have a floor plan of someone's space i draw out multiple ways that i can move the furniture around it's very common for people to naturally want to put furniture up against the wall. But I try to play around with furniture and spacing. I came up with three different designs to see how I can shift her furniture around because she did mention that she had awkward spacing and a lot of bare walls. And originally I thought about moving the sofa to where her TV stand was, but it's too small of a space. I thought about moving the couch in front of the window, but then she has heaters. And if I was to pull the couch out, it would make her apartment feel smaller. Went back to my original plan, where I'm gonna keep the couch where it is, 
the TV is gonna be where it is. It's gonna be building up with a gallery wall. Let's start with the area where the TV is. She mentioned having bare walls, so I would suggest investing in a TV stand like this one. Your most affordable option would be a TV stand from Ikea. They have many affordable solutions for smaller spaces. This will give it some height. It works well in this space while also giving you open and closed storage. If you feel in bold, you can also do a DIY project and paint it a different color. Maybe a terracotta color, a pink, an orange, or even a bold yellow. To avoid her TV getting lost in the wall, I am pulling in some wall shelving. Shelvings are great solutions to curate effortless wall art, photos, or decorative objects. I studied her photos a lot. And I see what she means by having an awkward space and a ton of bare walls. And immediately I thought of adding a gallery wall above her sofa. Khadija and I was messaging back and forth and she shared with me some of her artwork that she wants to put on this wall but she just don't know how to. And I feel like a lot of people have artwork and they don't know where to put it. Gallery walls can be challenging. Use your floor as a surface to organize and rearrange how you want your pictures to be on the wall. The key to this is to mix and match sizes of a frame and colors of a frame. Play around with height and location. Don't overthink it. If you're living in a rental, most likely you have this generic, unattractive light. I would suggest changing it out, but if you have never done that before, it can come off intimidating. In this space, I would add a floor lamp, and I really like this mid-century modern one. It's very sleek. So we're gonna finish off this space with a fun face pillow and bring in a pop of color with the tufted velvet pillow. I love this rug she has. It's very boho, kind of remind me of the 80s. Another idea I have is to go with a printed colorful rug that's a little bit muted. This will help her to disperse those colors throughout her home since she has that color. Five. If she decides to change out her decor or bring in more color, this rug would be more forgiving. Rugs are one of those things that are an investment. It either should be the first thing that you purchase when you want to decorate a space because you can draw inspiration from that. And we can't forget about the windows. I am thinking mustard velvet curtains. Curtains are one of those decor items that can style and frame any window. Warm the space and give it the flair you were looking for. Now you're probably thinking, well, she does have those here at the bottom of her floor. The curtain should go to the floor. Actually, her window sills are so beautiful. She can stop the curtain either a little bit past the window or a little bit above. And hanging your curtains, hang them high. I still think it will look stylish and really frame that area. Deja also has a pet rabbit, which I think is so cool. So it appears that in this corner, she has like some bags, accessory things for the rabbit that she does not have a storage for. And I think many of us, when we have pets inside of our home cage and everything else takes up a lot of space. And so it's very hard to find an organization solutions for that. I would challenge you to find a storage like this one. One that is not too bulky, but it's a great size to fit in this small space. Preferably go with white so that the space can still feel open and it will fill in all of that dead space. Make it look like it's supposed to be there. And take all of his stuff, his or her stuff, inside of those wicker baskets. And one thing I love about these baskets is that it contrasts well against this dresses. I also found a rabbit hutch on wheels. She has a huge cage or hutch for her rabbit that's taking up a lot of space. There's also a DIY rabbit hutch using Ikea furniture that is linked in the description box. I think that was so cool. So make sure you check it out. And if you do do that DIY, let me know. And then we are gonna finish up this space by adding a round mirror. So here is your before and after the space. I hope this gave you some ideas and you implement this in your space. The next space is coming from Nicole. The problem that she is having is very common if you live in a house, but I can also easily see this being a problem for anyone who has an open concept floor plan. Hey Catherine, I am excited to throw in my foyer for your design makeover. I have been so stuck on this area. I'm big on entryways because I feel like they're the first thing that you see. So. I just don't know what to do here. Really, I would love to add some molding, but my husband's just not going for it right now. I gotta do something else. Need to make a statement here. I need to make it pop, and I'm so stuck. We have this console table that I, I don't really like it anymore. I think it just doesn't fit our style anymore. It's like every corner is doing something and nothing is talking to each other. Then we have this wall over here. But again, it's not really doing anything for me. I do like the frame fabric, but I just don't know if it's like placed in the right spot. And the only reason why I haven't done the gallery wall is because I don't know if you can see into the family room, but I have two gallery walls and they're already. So I'm like, it's overkill. 
I have this bench just thrown here. I just, I think it could be more. And I really want to take the focus off of all those scuff marks. Again, it's kind of the same thing. Do I do a gallery wall? Do I do artwork? I just don't know. And I need help. I've been so stuck. I hear you, Nicole, and I agree 100%. Foyers and entryways are focal and they're the first thing that people see and they should tell a story. First off, I wanna say your home is beautiful. When I look at Nicole's space, I see a lot of modern and a traditional design style. I wanna stay true to that. Mostly time the foyer is focal, but it's compacted. So to avoid clutter, we are gonna go a minimal route. I wanna hopefully inspire you to rethink how you look at your space. I would first start off by removing the basket and the photo frames on the wall and replace them with a coat rack and a shoe tray for when you have guests over. Like this mid-century modern coat rack, which is very sleek and it's gonna give this area a clean look. For the area where the console table is, I would suggest finding one that is open and on the darker side. Nicole's area is already defined by other open areas inside of her home. I don't want the entryway to take away from it, but be in addition to. Having a more modern console will fit well in the design of the space. And above it, add a large print with color. Layer it with another photo. For you guys who are afraid of color but want it in your space, so going the path of bringing color in through art prints and accessories will be more forgiving. You won't feel like you are committed to that item because it's something you can easily swap out at any time. I think she should keep the lamp she has or a similar style to it because it's glass and it gives off that minimal look. And then underneath the console add some beautiful rattan baskets for texture that complements the darker desk. After watching the video, I noticed that Nicole didn't have an area rug. To the right and left, one side is her office and the other side is her dining area. And she has rugs in those. And I don't want to add a bigger rug, a longer runner to that space because it'll be an overkill. So I'm thinking a small rug near the entryway will be a good solution to add texture and warmth to that area. Staircases are often forgotten. It deserves some decor love too. For the scuffs on Nicole's wall, I have two solutions. You can either do one or both. I would touch up the wall with some paint. Sample paint costs no more than $5. That is an easy fix and or you can add large frames. I know she mentioned that she had a gallery wall in her living room, um, but I am thinking from the perspective of maybe being a guest at her home. I'm gonna see that console that's to the left and I'm gonna put my coat on the rack that's to the right and my eye immediately is gonna go up to her staircase where she will have photo frames. It will be the only photos in that area. So here are a few ideas on how to place the frames. I love the huge frames that all are the same size that are cascading along the stairwell. Both options allow you to have varying degrees of height. In the area where the bench is, you should do a DIY. Guys, if y'all have a piece of furniture that you don't wanna get rid of, upcycle it. Look on Pinterest, figure out different ways to use that item again and give it a new look. For the legs of this bench, use a darker wood stain like Provincial. I use a Provincial stain in a few of my videos. It's a darker wood and it would bring in that color from the coat rack. For the fabric, find a rich blue that would brighten up the space. I know she mentioned that she wanted something other than blue. As I study the pictures around her house, she does have a lot of blue and because she sort of have open interest ways into the other rooms, I didn't want to scale too far off from what she already has by going with a brighter, richer blue. Many times from my experience of working with people through e-design, they often want me to bring in colors. I'll create two boards for them and nine times out of 10, they will go for the one that's more comfortable for them. And that's why I was saying at the beginning, when you want to branch out and add color to your space, add it through accessories first. And for this blank wall, I think adding a large wall mirror will fill in the space. I do know that Nicole has kids, so having a floor mirror may not be ideal, but I made sure that when I did research, that this mirror can double as a floor mirror or a wall mirror. And then we're gonna top it off with the plants to liven up the space. Um, my suggestion would be a snake plant. They are beginner friendly, forgiving, hard to kill, and they will look great in the space. Here's a mood board how everything will complement each other. I saved this space for last. This one has the most dramatic changes with the help of simple fixes. Hi, Catherine. My name is Kayla, and the space I need your help with is my bathroom. 
My sister and I have lived in a rental space for about five years now, and we've tried to change this space in so many different ways. We've tried to add things. We've tried to change the different color schemes, the different themes, all type of things to help it work better for us. But we've been unsuccessful. So now we turn to you. The bathroom is very small. It doesn't have much storage space. You know, as a woman, we spend a lot of time in the bathroom and it has terrible yellow lighting. It's the only one we have, so we need your help. Hey girl, I see what she's saying. Everything does look outdated on top of it already being small and her and her sister have to share this bathroom. So you can do a couple of things, but first I recommend anybody who live in a rental apartment where you wanna start breaking stuff down, painting stuff, talk to your landlord. You may be saving them some money by making rental changes, but I would still suggest talking to them first. But my first tip is to paint the walls white. It would immediately brighten up the space and make it feel bigger. There is specific paint for a bathroom, remember that. And it seems like she has pink walls already, so if you still want to go that route, maybe go with a dusty pink. But for this example, I would go with white. White goes with everything. Invest in peel and stick vinyl flooring. Yes, that is a thing. It's very popular nowadays. It's literally just a vinyl peel and stick that you can put on your floor and then peel it off when you are ready to move out or change it to a different design. You can also paint the cabinets as well. I'm gonna link a video down below on how to paint a cabinet. You can honestly paint this any color, but I'm thinking a darker brown to add a natural element. Then add contact paper on your sink. It's also another rental friendly solution. Everybody has done it there's so many videos on youtube if you're watching this and you have a bathroom that is just unattractive outdated just not your taste if you do these first couple of steps your bathroom will look a hundred times better some people never think to add decor to a bathroom it's another area we spend so much of our time in especially us women so adding those important elements like decor or light is just as important. I would suggest incandescent light bulbs. Find ones that indicate a warm white or cool white. Light is so darn important. And yellow lights are good in some cases, tasks like bedroom, but the bathroom, not so much. And swapping out those light bulbs for big bulbs will give it that Hollywood vanity look. After the initial changes, I would say let's add lots of accessories, lots of color. I'm thinking printed shower curtains and textured baskets, some fun prints and decorative knobs. Changing knobs are affordable and gives cabinets or drawers a new look. Your landlord was to allow you to take that cabinet off that wall, but I would say an over the toilet storage like this one would also open up that space because I think having a cabinet in there is just taking up a lot of wall space and making the bathroom feel even smaller. And if Kayla was to make these changes over in her bathroom, here is a render of what the bathroom would look like. Thank you so much for sending in y'all videos. I hope this video gave you all a different way of looking at home decor and small spaces. I wanna make over more small spaces and branch out and doing more e-design. There are so many people who have these spaces that they just don't know what to do with it. And I am here to help you figure out the solution. That is my niche and my passion and I really enjoy coming up with solutions. Let me know if you like this style of video. Keep sending in your questions and your spaces. And maybe I'll be making over your space in the next series of Just Being Home. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And as always, I will talk to you all later.